This is David Newenhouse. Back in 2018, David called 911, claiming that he had hit the girlfriend of his deceased stepson earlier that night. He explained that she was lying unconscious outside of his home, and they thought he may have killed her. When the police arrived, they found the body of 29-year-old Candace Black lying on the driveway. She appeared to have an extensive injury to the back of the head. Next to her body, the police found a long wooden club with metal screws sticking out of the striking end. Candace's blood and hair was found on the end of the club. Unless you're a Dutch. Okay, so... <clears throat> so, David, do you understand that this statement's being recorded? I do. And do I have your permission to record this statement? You do. And... All right. So, obviously, we're here to talk to you about what happened tonight. Um, and you're willing to talk to us about that? I guess. Okay. So, early on... Sounds like you got into an argument with Candace. I wouldn't say we were arguing. We were talking about what had happened for the last year. We were talking about some of the stuff I found inside my house after, I don't know, my son died on my floor last Saturday night. Um, when did your son die? Last Saturday. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. On was the third. Sorry to hear that. David's son, Kyle, had just passed away eight days prior from a drug overdose. Kyle started using drugs when he met Candace, so when he died, David put all the blame on her. They were, I don't know, she admitted that they had been smoking meth, found all kinds of stuff, heroin, I think, uh, lots of little tiny baggies, you know, so anyway, they brought him back. He was in the hospital until Friday night when he became an organ donor. Um, I've been trying to get her to come and get her stuff. I found some journals, I guess. That I tried calling you guys earlier this week. I know I talked to the receptionist and she put me through to the voicemail of, uh, I don't know, whichever one of the officers that responded last Saturday night. Okay. I, I thought I left a message, no one ever got a hold of me, you know, so when she was there you know, talking about, you know, my son's life for the last year and a half or so and she had been with him, you know, and I brought those to her attention, trying to figure out what was going on and they'd been dealing drugs out of my house, going in and out of my be their bedroom window at times, middle of the night. You know, I told her that I was trying to get a hold of the cops and that I was going to bring that to their attention. Um, I don't know. I, I went into the bathroom. I came back out. I sat on the couch. And I, I was just looking down like this. I've just been in shock. I've been crying a lot for the last week. You know, my whole life's revolved around my son. The last since 2006 or so when he moved in with me. It's my stepson. And uh, she just all of a sudden hit me with the iPad. And uh, I, I, I don't know exactly where it went from there, but I, I was trying to get her off of me. She's just incredibly strong. I mean, she's, she's not that big. Not that, I, I couldn't get her off me. Behind my door, I've always had a stick. I have swords in my house. Sometimes I would have one of my swords behind the door just for home protection. I'm a registered sex offender can on firearms. This place is a scary place. There's a lot of meth heads, a lot of, you know, home burglaries and stuff. So I, I've always had it behind my door. You know, I, I eventually grabbed that and I hit her with it. And I hit her with it multiple times. Just trying to defend myself, trying to get her off of me. Okay. I don't really know anything else. David claims that Candace came over to his home to pick up some items that she had left there. When she arrived, they began to argue and Candace used an iPad to assault David. Claiming self-defense, David explains that he grabbed the bat from behind the door and used it on Candace multiple times. David is leaving important information out of his statement, which we will get into later. Can I, can I go back a little bit and ask you a couple questions earlier he, on? Yeah. Yeah, how about, can you just take us through your evening? I mean, from about maybe eight, nine o'clock. How, how to start from there and just kind of give us a timeline of what's going on? 
I, I don't really know the times. That's fine. Just would you? Would, you guys were both home all evening. No, she had not been there since everything happened with my son. I've been sending texts back and forth to her, trying to get her to come get her personal belongings. Okay. I had told her that you know she could have her stuff. I didn't want her to take Kyle's personal stuff. I didn't feel belong to her. And uh, yeah, so she was supposed to be there around noon. And she didn't get there until around four or five. And uh, this is after it happened, just went and sat on my couch. Okay, so she Shaking. she got there around four or five, and then what happened for the rest of the evening? You know, for a couple hours we talked, I guess. Okay. About what did you guys talk about? I think I just explained all of that. About the drug dealing and uh, okay. The drug dealing and involvement. Okay. That's for why she didn't call for help when my son was dying on the floor. She had a better window wide open and was planning on going down. Yeah. And how was the conversation going? He was arguing, just talking? Just talking, some crying. From? from long gaps. Who, crying from, from who? From both of you? or? Yeah, I was okay. crying. I think she was. I don't know. That's for why she didn't help my son, why she didn't yell for help when I was sleeping mm -hmm. on the couch. What'd she say about that? She said, you know, w when they moved into my house, I gave them one rule. I told her, I don't care what you do, just don't be coming and going between midnight and six. That's what time I sleep. That's what time normal people sleep. I don't want to upset my neighbors. And uh, they never really respected that. And so she didn't want to wake me up. I guess Kyle had said something about trying not to wake me up before he passed. So I, I, I don't know. So at the point where you came out of the bathroom and sat down on the couch, this, she had... You guys have been talking for a couple hours at that point? Yes. And what do you suppose prompted her to get angry with you and, and hit you? The only thing I can figure is that I said I was coming to the cops. I had those notebooks sitting, kind of opened up in front of me. And that's, I, I, I don't know. Dead ledgers you were talking about? I guess, yeah. Okay. I mean, it looks like some mafia-style drug dealing from what I've seen in the movies. I, I don't know. Where are, the, been involved where are those in items at now? They were thrown onto my driveway. Okay. So when she hit you, where did she hit you at? Somewhere right in this area. With the iPad? The iPad. Where's the iPad now? Um, I think it was on my ottoman. Okay. Or whether it was a footstool or whatever, coffee okay. table. Does uh, her, your son and her have their own bedroom? They do. Okay. So back bedroom on the left. And how long has she lived there? She moved in with Kyle about a year ago. Maybe, maybe August of 2017. Anyone else live there? No. When she came over today, how'd she get over? Did she have a car? Uh, she doesn't drive so much. I don't know if she took an Uber or if she rode the bus. Okay. I didn't really ask. What'd she bring with her? She just has a little rolling suitcase, I guess, mm -hmm. a little square box thing, I think. The iPad had been at my house for a while. Oh, I think it had been there since last weekend. What does she have at your house still? All her stuff? All of her stuff. What did, what did she say as you guys were, were fighting? Was she saying anything or just not that I can recall. She just out of the blue started hitting you? Slam me in the face with the iPod or the head with the iPad. She ever assaulted you before? No. She's always been nice and friendly. We've always gotten along. You think she was high? I, I think so. I, I don't know. I smoked pot, that's all I did. I don't drink. My wife drank herself to death. My ex wife, I guess. How many times do you think she hits you? I mean, just once really hard with that iPad. And then 
maybe a couple of times with their hands. With their hands. And where'd she hit you with the iPad? Up on the, right, right on the, right in the front of the head? Front of the head, yeah. Okay. I guess, or not, I don't know, forehead. What about when she was hitting you with her hands, where was that at? Chest area, yeah. towards yeah. my throat, I guess. And then, what made her stop hitting you? Was me hitting her with a stick. Okay. But how did how did that go down? How did you get the stick and I don't know, sir. Okay. It's just a blur. It's yeah. been behind my door for years. A door in your bedroom? No, no, my front living room door. Okay. Right next. Okay. And when you guys were fighting, all this occurred in the living room? Yeah. Okay. Did she try to leave or did you try to leave? We both ended up outside on the driveway at some point. How'd you end up outside? I don't know exactly. Okay. Where were you at when you first hit her with the stick? Inside the house. Inside right, the by house. The front door, I think. Okay. And then she left the iPad in the living room. Then correct. I I think it just dropped after she. Okay, she dropped it. I I don't know. And then uh, she's so angry. Any neighbors come out or anything or anyone? No, not that I know of. I don't think so. No. I, I thought somebody had to have seen something. I just went and sat down on my couch and waited. Who called the police? I did at midnight or so when I woke back up. Okay. When did all this happen? I don't know the exact time. How long do you think that... I, do you... I mean, it could have been around 5 or 6 o'clock. Oh, I, okay. I, I do you know. think she was outside from 5 or 6 till midnight? I imagine. Yeah. Um, did you go check on her? I didn't. No? I sat down on my couch. My heart was, felt like it was going to explode. And I uh, just sat there, shocked, I guess. And then I, I must have fallen asleep. So I woke up, sent a text to my mom, and then called 911. What'd you tell your mom? I, I just said that, you know, she hit me and I fought back, I think. And, that I was going to call 911. Okay. Something David failed to mention was that ever since his son passed away, he had been trying to get Candace to come over to his home. He messaged daily, and when she finally agreed, he told her to come alone. The other problem is that David had no defensive marks anywhere on his body or on his iPad. Did so, you, when you went back out and she was out there, did you expect to see her or did you think she was going to leave? What do you mean when I went back out? When you hit her with a stick, did you think she was going to be okay, or...? I, I, I don't know what I thought. I, after she hit me and I was fighting for what I thought was my life, mm -hmm. I, I just... I, I don't know what... I, I don't know. I feel okay. like I should be able to just remember every detail, but I don't. If you don't remember, you don't remember. remember. I mean, if you don't remember, that's fine. I know, but I'm trying to help out. Oh, I, I know. Let me ask, maybe this will this will help a little bit. So the first time um, you were trying to defend yourself by hitting her, that was inside, yes. and then she started to leave. Did she have her bags with her and start bringing them outside, or were they already outside at this point? Her bags, when I came in, I threw them outside. You threw them out, okay. So that if she did come back, I guess, she wouldn't have to come inside for her stuff. And then after she uh, was walking out down the driveway, did you follow her out there? I think the fight was continuing going all the way down the driveway. Okay. And then when you got most of the way down the driveway is when uh, where, where she's at now. Is that where things kind of finished and you went back inside the house? I think so, yes. Okay. After she fell down, did you hit her any further? Maybe once. Maybe once. How many times total do you think you hit her with the bat? Good. I have no idea how many times. Okay. And when she was on the ground, uh, and you hit her when she was on the ground, what we were, can you remember what your thoughts were at that point? I don't know. Okay. And then what did you do with the bat after that? It's, I don't have a bat. I have or the stick, a whatever. A maple stick that grew in my front yard and I cut it down. Okay. What did you do with that uh, maple stick? I just dropped it. Near where she was at? I imagine, yes. Okay.
Are you working? Um, not really, no. On and off. Okay. I worked Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday of last week, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. I don't know. You, you have any video of the surveillance in your house? No. Do you know of any neighbors that do? I know. Do you know your neighbors very well? Mm, pretty well. I mean, I'm the newest wow. person there. and I've been there for 12 years. Wow, okay. So... When the police looked into David's criminal history, they found that not only was he a registered sex offender, but he also had four other felonies, including one for second-degree incest. They also noticed that David did not appear apologetic for taking Candace's life. Where's your phone at? Did they take that with you? Or is that... Oh, it's on line with 911. I think I just left it on my leather ottoman when I saw flashlights outside my house. And okay. I I opened when up you my called 911, what did you tell them? Did you tell them? Pretty much the same thing I told you. I told them what happened as best as I could recall. So you knew she was gone at that point or? Pretty much. Okay. Did you talk to anybody else between when you called the police just to text to your mom? Just to Did your mom call you back? No, she texted you back? I, I don't think so, no. Okay. Not that I saw, not why I was still in possession of my phone. You had a pretty good relationship with your mom? Is there anything else you think we should know? I mean, I don't know. have you always got along with her pretty good, or? I got along with her great. Um, you know, when she was so first dating, her and Kyle had had an argument. I had told her, you know, that if Kyle ever hurts you or anything, you let me know. I didn't raise him like that. You know, I always thought that she could come to me if something was going on. Always, you know, she came up. You know, I used to go over and play Dungeons and Dragons with some of the younger kids that my son went to school with. Mm -hmm. I guess kids his age. And uh, after they got out of school, they used to play at my house. I went and played there. And that's where I met her. You know, and one day when I was over there, she was upset. And I was talking to her. And, I don't know, her and Kyle were fighting. And I always thought I was there. And we could talk. So I'm going to ask you a couple hard questions, okay? Okay. Um, I understand that in the beginning you were getting hit and you were trying to defend yourself. Did you get to a point where you felt like maybe the force you were using didn't match what was coming after you? Do you feel like you got to the point? After being attacked? Yeah. I think after or just continuously trying to fight me that I went into a rage mode. And I lost control. Okay. That's what I think happened. And then, so, when she was trying to leave, when you look back on it now, do you think it was the right decision to go go out after her? I don't even know that it was a decision. It, just it was happened. just because you were in a rage mode? I, I guess. Okay. I, I was fighting for my life at the beginning. And uh, I, I don't know why I didn't disengage at some point when... I finally had control of the situation, or if I ever did before, you know, she was hurt, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. When she was walking out of the house, did you notice that she was significantly hurt, or at that point did it not seem as bad to you? When do you think she her most significant... She was still trying to fight and hurt me okay. while she, when she was leaving my house. Was she saying anything? I, I, I don't know. I mean, she wasn't yelling at you, or...? Not that I, I, I don't know. Okay. It's not like he was dead silent, but I don't know what was being said or anything like okay. that. Did you uh, did you want to kill her at all, or were you that angry at her? No. Okay. We talked. She was going to get herself into rehab. And I guess she was scheduled for Tuesday or something go in and detox. Do you ever threaten to hurt her before at any point? Never? 
<clears throat> have you ever had a time in your life where you went into a rage mode you just kind of lost it a little bit in the past i've never heard anybody in my life i've yelled and screamed or i got shaky mad never hurt anybody never attacked anybody when i was in high school i got a couple of fist fights after being attacked I, i've never attacked or been violent or anything like that okay oh, my wife she bent her aluminum cane over the top of my head she was an alcoholic and drunk three days later i bent it back so that she could use it to walk again hmm. there's quarter marks where she threw a handful of quarters at me on my door I'm not a violent person. I've never hurt anybody. Do you drink any alcohol at all? Never. Never? Maybe you just smoked out or smoked. marijuana? Well, I mean, when I went to Alaska, I had two or three beers over okay. the course of a week. Do you smoke any marijuana today? I smoked some today, yes. But when's the last time you had any? I don't know, earlier this evening. Okay. Yeah, she, before she got there or after? Before she got there. Okay. Did she ever go into the, her bedroom while she came over? Or she did while I was in the bathroom. She did? She was. If she did, it was while she, I was in the bathroom, okay. but I don't think so. I think she was just in the living room the whole time. Do you have any idea what's going to happen from this point on? I don't know. I'm going to go to jail for the rest of my life. Well, not necessarily true. Okay. I mean, there's two sides to everything. Okay. All right, we have to investigate it and see. Okay. So. And you, you never planned this, correct? Or? No. What, what time did you text her to come over or call her? Do you remember? Was that earlier in the day or? That? Yeah, it was much earlier in the day. Did you text her? Yes. And I also talked to her with her on the, cell, on the phone. When I mean, you told her to come over, you just told her to come over and get her stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll take a quick break real quick if you want. Do you want some coffee or something? That would be amazing. I don't know. We yeah. have. Let me go see what we got. Yeah. David was charged with first degree murder because prosecution believed he planned on killing Candace before she arrived. The case would go to trial and the evidence was presented to a jury. The jury would find that David was not guilty of first degree murder. However, they did find him guilty of second degree murder instead. Because of his criminal history, David was on the high end of the state sentencing guidelines so he would be sentenced to 23 years in prison. What are your thoughts on this case? Please share them in the comments below.